Hello world, welcome to Epitaph with Novelette. Today's segment is going to deal with pleasing God. What does it mean to please God? Hebrews 11 verse 6 says that without faith it is impossible to please God. So we can believe, we can conceive, but we need to please God because he is the one that brings it into fruition. So let's begin with the definition of the word please. The English uh, definition of the word please is an active verb. It is the state of being. It means to bring to happiness or to bring pleasure. The Hebrew word for please is called ratza, which means to accept. The Nas Exhaustive Concordance defines it as to be pleased with or to accept favorably. It is from this latter uh, definition that we understand the common word please. For example, when someone says, please come in, this means that they are pleased with you or you have found favor with them and they've invited you into their space. So the word please is a definition that encompasses happiness, satisfaction, pleasure, and favor. I would like to suggest that in order to please God, we must pass through all of these steps. First, we must make God happy. He must be satisfied with our works, our motives, and our actions. Once he is satisfied, this brings acceptance, and acceptance brings forth pleasure, and when God finds pleasure with us, it brings forth favor. Favor, therefore, brings forth blessing. When God is pleased with us, this leads to the blessings of God as they will follow us and overtake us. Favor then works with prayer. Favor works outside of prayer. Favor works in spite of prayer. Favor will do what prayer cannot do. Favor stores up blessings. Favor is the gift of God. It is the gift that keeps on giving. Favor in the biblical context means respect. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4 to 7, tells us that God had respect unto Abel's offering. It means that God was pleased with Abel's offering. Both Cain and Abel gave an offering. The difference, however, was in the quality of their offering. The quality of their offering depicted their love for God. One gave out of the abundance and the love that he had for God. The other one gave out of uh, mere formality. He did it because it was something that he felt he had to do, not something that he wanted to do. Abel gave out of his abundance. Cain gave a little and he received little from God. Abel gave in abundance and he received abundance from God. He earned God's love and he earned God's respect. In fact, as we can see, Abel did not just give the first fruits of his offering, but Abel gave from his increase. He gave more than he needed to give. He gave because he loved God. When you please God, you will earn God's love. You will earn God's respect you will earn God's favor. In order to please God, you must do two things. First, you must believe that God is. Second, you must believe that God is a rewarder. Uh, Hebrews chapter six tells us that we must believe that God is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, first thing, you must believe that God is the I am, that is the I am that I am. It means that he is Lord over everything. He is in everything. He created everything. He can do anything. He can heal anything. He can deliver you from everything. He can restore everything. There is nothing that God cannot do because he created everything. He is in everything. Everything is in him. We must also believe that he is a rewarder. God rewards us because he is pleased with us. He rewards us when we diligently seek him. 
So what does it mean to be diligently seeking God? It means that we need to be attentive to God, attentive to God's interest, attentive to God's desire. We must be attentive to God in prayer. We must be attentive to God in seeking his face. We must be attentive to God in seeking his word. We must be attentive to God in seeking to spend time in his presence. We must be attentive to God by making time, quality time for God. We make time for family, we make time for friends, we make time for adventures, we make time for vacation. But what about making time for God? We ought to put God first in our lives. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. What are these other things? These other things or everything that we desire, it's those things that we tend to put before God. We say, oh, we're going to do this, or we're going to do that. We're going to achieve this, or I have to do this this morning. I have to attend to this today. And we put all of these things. We wake up in the morning and we have all of these things on our minds. But where is God on our mind? Do we wake up in the morning and roll out of bed and the first thing we think about is, God, what can I do for you today? How can I please you, God? No, we think about what we want to do, but we need to put God first. We'll 